guide people through that. I see. But the majority of our calls uh, deal with the ADA and uh, um, all the nuances and all the changes and all the things that could go. So, uh, and, and again, everybody is important here, but, but because of your introduction and your background and, and our current situation in Iraq, uh, let's say a, a, a soldier returns, uh, now has a disability, or, and maybe even one that was discovered not actually at the time that he was just right. he or she was discharged, but comes home and you mentioned several things, uh, mental health issues and whatnot, and, and I, I, I'm sure there are some pretty traumatic things that people had to witness. Uh, what do they do, Scott? I mean, they, they, they give you a call and, and you try to just help walk them through the bureaucracy? or Yeah, we try to guide them through that. I'll give you an example, a uh, great example of a gentleman. He was a reservist. Uh, he had a great job here, his wife and kids and family. He deployed for a year and a half to Iraq. He came back, and, and uh, when he came back, it was basically he had his 15 days of leave to use. And then he was back on a job site, uh, back in a civilian job site, uh, back with his family reintegrating mm -hmm. uh, after going through several traumatic experiences. So um, what we did is you know, made, the, made the veteran feel comfortable that there are services out there. We helped him use the Vet Counseling Center, very effective. Um, uh, we also referred him to uh, mental health with the VA and, and um, What's been very good about the mental health from VA is that they're they're they are much better at helping somebody reintegrate now. I see. So this person is able to do this in stride while he was reintegrating with his family. Okay, he's getting yeah. back home and he's yeah. getting back to work and uh, yeah. And yeah. what happened is we found with his work site too, he had had an injury that affected how he moved at his uh, how he did his job. So we worked with the Rehabilitation Service Commission for accommodations, and we did a, what we call an ADA audit, uh, Americans Disability Act audit for accommodations, and they were able to find three different ways to help this person do their job. I see. And Rehabilitation Service Commission paid for that. So here we helped uh, that veteran reintegrate back into to his family. That's, that's what we like to hear. His that's, job. That's just what we like to hear. Here it's Ohioans taking care of Ohioans. Well, we know from following the national media, we have a new president now. Uh, our direction in Iraq uh, will, will change. I mean, we're all pretty sure of that. There'll be some winding down here, we're told. So I'd have to assume the numbers there will increase. And some of these people, I understand, have actually went for multiple deployments. I know for me, this is, uh, I've went on seven uh, deployments over my career I as see. a reservist. So when you think of a reservist being two weeks uh, a year yeah. and you one know, week I, in a month. Uh, it's one of the reasons I asked you the question <laughs> that uh, I didn't realize you had gone that many. Hey, give me an example of a typical accommodation that you said maybe a, a employer wasn't really uh, uh, doing anything wrong, but they just didn't know. Yeah. Just, what would be an example? Well, one an example they called in, um, um, there was a job opening, a person applied, they offered the job to the person. Um, in that job opening, they didn't have anything that said you have to lift 100 pounds or you have to transitionally lift uh, 25 pounds over a repeated period of time. That wasn't in the job description. The employer posted this job, put it out, uh, a gentleman applied for it, got the job. And then they said, wait a minute, you can't do this because you can't really lift throughout the day. And uh, we're going to go ahead and give that job to your buddy, or to your friend. I see. Uh, we had to talk with the HR director and say, okay, now you, when you have your job descriptions, you have to look at putting exactly what that job is okay. uh, so that there's not confusion on this. So uh, uh, what you're saying then is, Scott, was an accommodation here was to make sure you clearly articulate in your job descriptions right. so somebody does We helped them even one from that because we said, okay, well, what kind of uh, movement are we talking about? I see. That's an interesting example because, I mean, what comes to my mind, of course, being an old public school educator and principal and whatnot, I signed a lot of IEPs and right. individual education programs, and 
accommodations there in the school system, I mean, is pretty common knowledge that the kids right. have the opportunity to get a tutor or extra time or whatnot. That's sort of a different wrinkle, though. I never really thought about that. Right. Man. Yeah, on this one, in the job site, we were actually able to find that that with that job, we could use a certain cart that was at a level, and this person never had to transitionally lift those 25 oh. pounds. He could use that. There's your accommodation right there. Yeah. And then the employer was like, wow, we could use this for all of our folks and reduce our workers' comp. We always have folks having back injuries. We sure. could reduce all that. There's so. a win-win for everybody. So there the employer was, wow, we... Uh, never thought about that. Never thought of that, and uh, we wouldn't have been able to do that if we... We got on a employer service specialist from Rehabilitation Service Commission. We got on um, um, the, their workers' comp safety representative, and it really helped them lower yeah. their workers' comp fee. So. Well, as you know, the, the title of our show is Law Talk, mm -hmm. and um, we discuss legal issues on the show right. all over. <laughs> And I think most people have a uh, connotation of, of the law, of a judge. And uh, well, last week we were talking in, uh, about adult probation, and we really did see the judge, you know, sentence somebody. I mean, things do happen in courtrooms. But I, I can tell you, I mean, I think it's a general perception, and I'm sure you already know this. Somebody says ADA. Somebody says uh, <laughs> uh, it's the disabilities, Americans with disabilities. Right. That's correct? Right. It's American a federal law. Yeah. Yep. You know, immediately, yep, uh, go find your lawyer and uh, yeah. let's put down a big retainer <laughs> and some poor business may go out of business. Do it. Is, is that true? No. Uh, what happens is uh, the ADA elicits this or it uh, conjures up the idea of courtrooms and lawsuits and, and things like that. The majority of issues are, are mediated or solved right at the point of, of what takes place. Um, the majority of the issues never go to court, never go to that. I mean, um, courts are full, dockets are full, uh, litigation is, 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 there's a large waiting period sure. sometimes to make it to that. Many of these things get taken care of just by understanding. And uh, that's what we really love is when we can help somebody or they ask us before they think about putting out a position or they ask us about uh, accommodations or ask us about what's reasonable, yeah, what's not. That's prevention right there. So Yeah, so a lot of that gets taken care of well before there's any issues. You know? How about, uh, it could be helpful here, uh, you know, maybe we could we can pin it down to an actual case. Can you give us a couple of, uh, just a few examples? Oh, sure, sure. There was one. Uh, there was uh, a little village. It wasn't quite enough uh, to be a town yet. Uh, there's not as much funding in that. The main business was a steel business. Sure. It went away. And uh, with this town, they had a, a very old uh, building that um, had a second floor room where they had their, their county, their, their, not a county, their village meetings. And this, these meetings weren't really accessible. It was up a steep uh, staircase. Uh, some of the residents couldn't make it. Uh, one of the residents called me, and uh, what I did is called the, the mayor and, uh, and talked to the attorney in that town and in that little village. Uh, it was really a part-time mayor. Yeah. And um, we talked about what's reasonable and what's not. You know, he thought that me calling meant that they were going to have to install this elevator in an old building. Expensive proposition. Very expensive, and uh, that's not reasonable but uh, we just discussed about other sites. So how'd you get the guy in? Yeah well what we did is right across the street there was their newer annex. Oh. And we were able to use um, a room there that was uh, accessible. So that was the problem. Huh? Everything was accessible there so they just moved their meetings from the village center to the annex and now they hold their public hearings there and their public meetings there and it's a win-win for everybody. No trip to federal court. And, no trip uh, for federal court. <laughs> no case. No litigation. Well, that's, pretty, uh, that's pretty interesting there. The majority uh, of things get solved like that. Just simply by communication. Can you think of any others? Or? Well, uh, let's say for employment. Now, the employment yeah. seems to be the, the big thing. Um, a lot of times we'll get calls in for employment, and it's usually just a matter of understanding or a misunderstanding. And uh, as long as we, uh, we try to work to inform the person inform the employer right off the bat and try to help them move forward. And uh, many times it, it's just a matter of uh, an employer learning or uh, folks learning. Uh, we had a clear example of um, a person, he had a 
progressive diagnosis uh, that he wasn't going to get better. Is that what that means, a progressive? Yeah, he kind of, 